So I went ahead, I made like the world's smallest Git repo for us for a second. So if you're like me, you're using AI agents to generate tons of code. And I've been doing this for the last year and I tend to just check things in and say YOLO. You're probably also guilty with it too, but it's okay. We're trying to do something better and I'm actually trying to review the code now. And this is where that whole concept of stacked diffs comes in. It's basically just breaking down those giant PRs into smaller chunks that you can actually read. And it's a workflow that big companies have been using for a while, and it's perfect for how we're building with AI now. So I had Tomas, the co-founder of Graphite, on my live stream, and he's basically super passionate about this stuff. And in this video, he does a live demo from scratch, completely raw. He shows you exactly how to build a four PR stack with their CLI. And if you're trying to change the way that you code in 2026, I think this is going to be a great way for us to get started. Now let's go. So I went ahead, I made like the world's smallest Git repo for us for a second. Right now, it just has like a quick demo.txt. I'm on branch, if I were to run git status, you'd see that I'm on branch main with nothing to commit. And if I were to run git branch, you would see that there are like six branches in here that I just created. Now, this is not really the full story of stacking, right? The story of stacking is that you should be creating branches off of other branches. And so the easiest way to visualize it is through Graphite. Our command line tool is called GT. And the first command that I love to teach people is GT log. So what GT log is gonna do is it's gonna show me our repository sort of as a graph here, right? So I, I'm on branch main and I know that because it's highlighted and it says current. And main has three directly descendant branches, right? So it has this account for empty state, this fixed crash and reload, and this activity feed open API spec. But what's really interesting around this activity feed open API spec is that there's a line coming out of it to activity feed server API. And out of that branch, there's a different line to activity feed front end. These three branches together make what we call a stack, right? So a stack is just a set of branches that see that a set of branches that have dependencies between one another, right? So we have here like main, activity feed open API spec, server API, and front end. Based on the naming of this, my guess here is that I'm working on some feature called activity feed, right? And I've broken it out into three distinct like portions, right? So the first one is I made an open API spec. We're good. We then, we went ahead and made the server API based on that, right? So we implemented that endpoint. And then we went ahead and made the front end, which like calls that endpoint. And one of the key features of stacking is that every branch is only dependent on the things below it, right? So the open API spec, I can make that, it's totally fine if I have an endpoint definition that maybe isn't fully implemented, especially if no one's calling it yet. Then I go ahead and I add the server API. It's totally fine to have an endpoint that no one calls on the front end. And lastly, I go ahead and I built the front end that calls into it. And so the idea of breaking it up like this is that it's really easy for uh, me or someone else to go ahead and say like, oh, what's in the activity feed server? And it would tell you, oh, it's it's just this like change server endpoint, right? Or the front end, well, it's just some front end logic. It's based on this other thing. And what's great about that is you have some really, really focused, uh, you have some really, really focused changes that are easy to understand. When it's one day time to merge this, you would merge it from bottom up. So you go activity feed, open API spec, merge it, activity feed server API, merge that, and then front end, go ahead and merge that. You say, oh, I was on main, I didn't have any changes here. I got cursor, all I got is some demo text. Um, <laughs> if I were to go ahead and do, so here, I, I don't got much, right? I, I just have main. If I were to go ahead and check out open API spec, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do that with get checkout. What you'd see is I've gone ahead and I've added the open API YAML here. So here I've gone ahead and added some example of like, okay, maybe there's an open API. If I then run GT up, which keeps running me up the stack, you'll go ahead and see I implement a server. And then right after that, if I do GT up again, you'll go ahead and see that I've implemented some front ends for that. And what's cool about this is if I were to run GT log again, you'd see that it knows that I'm on the top of the stack. And this view is a little dense here. And so my favorite command to show people now is GT log short. That shows me the same information, just in a little bit more of a condensed form. Let's say that I've gone ahead, I've implemented this front end, and now I need to go ahead and I want to add a new icon set, right? So like, okay, I did the front end, it was great. But as, as I'm looking at it, or maybe I showed it to a friend, they're like, hey, Tomas, this is great. But like, you probably should add like a, you probably should change these icons, right? I'm like, that's a great point. So I go ahead, I, in this case, I'm going to do something really simple, which is I'm just going to pretend I like touched like an icons file, right? Touch an icons.ts. Great. I've created some kind of file. I now need to go ahead and create a new branch and a new PR on that. I can either use that, do that in Git, 
Or an even simpler way to do that using Graphite is I can just run GT create and I can give it some name like feet, add icons. And if I really want to give it a branch name, I can just type one here, but I'm not going to and Graphite will figure it out automatically for me. Oh. It goes ahead and says, hold up. You haven't staged any changes, right? I think one of the things that people find really confusing in Git is this idea that they need to stage changes. And so we can, it, it will go ahead and be like, hold on, you don't have any changes staged, but you're creating this branch. Do you want to just include these changes? I'm like, totally. And so it goes ahead and creates that branch. When I go ahead and run GT log short one more time, you'll see that my stack of three has grown into a stack of four. Mm. Amazing. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to run GT submit. And what GT submit is going to do is it's going to go ahead, it's going to check if these PRs already exist, and then it's going to go ahead and automatically open up a bunch of PRs for me. And so it's going to go ahead and do that there. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and drag this into screen. It's going to go ahead and show me all four going published right there. And oh. now they've gone ahead, they've been created. I get some confetti. Uh, nice. If I view the topmost PR, Graphite has a whole code review viewer and we can show you what that looks like in a second, but people always seem to want to see the links on GitHub, so I'll start there. What you'll see is that we've created all four of those PRs off of main in a stack. And so mm -hmm. on every PR, there's this comment, it's maintained for you automatically by Graphite, which goes ahead and says we have one, two, three, four. And if you were to go ahead and look at the files change, for example, here in front end, you see they're only the front end files, right? Because it's based on the server API. And so back here on the conversation, you can see even GitHub knows that it's based on this other, other PR. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. And let's say that one of you, or maybe uh, AI code reviewer, automatically detects like, hey, Tomas, this looks good, but actually you're running the, you're running the server on the wrong port, right? And I'm like, oh my God, you're totally right. So what I do is I go ahead and I check out the server one. Again, I'm just using Git here. I go ahead, I open up the server and I'm like, oh, yep, we run API servers on port 8,000. That's gonna conflict with some things. And, and now I have a change. I think this is where it can get hairy because you have to do some rebase magic, very confusing. No one likes to do it. And so instead what you can do here is you can just run GT modify. And what GT modify is gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, what, what are you trying to change? I wanna change everything I just did, that whole thing. And it's gonna go ahead both and update it. It's gonna go ahead and do uh, run these restock commands and update everything. So now when I go ahead and I run GT submit one more time, what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, hey, you've updated a PR and also there are some PRs on top of this one that also need to be updated. Do you want me to update those as well? So I'm like, yep, totally. And what happens is it goes ahead, it detects that those three need to be updated and it goes ahead and pushes the updates to all three of those. We've done that rebase automatically. Nothing stressful about it. It's all handled for us. When I go ahead and I open that right back up in either GitHub or Graphite, I've already go ahead and open the server API and look at files change. You'd see that now it's running on the right port, 8,000. That looks good. And I've included everything. That's amazing. So what happens, it's really cool when you see the whole thing working, it just feels like magic. Well, what happened if they're merge conflicts? The answer there is that Graphite will go ahead. It'll drop you right into like the Git merge conflict resolution flow. You can patch up your files and then rather than running git, uh, git merge dash dash continue, you just run gt continue and we'll keep rebasing the rest of the stack for you. Wow. So that's that's super duper handy. <laughs> and that specific stack that you're working at is only that code. So all the other rebasing stuff doesn't get flooded into your pull request for that right. thing. And you can still continue to work like in that isolated environment. You're like, okay, they up, that's the change. And since you made a change to that, is it going to show also diffs within that? Like, can you see a commit history too within that and see those? It's a great question. Yeah. So I, when you run GT modify, we mm -hmm. do a, a amend. And so when you amend on GitHub, it's not great. Um, <laughs> it shows you that you went ahead and you updated it from A to uh -huh. B. That's kind of okay. ugly. In <laughs> Graphite though, we'll go, this is where, this is where I'll uh, talk around our own product. We actually keep track of all of that. And so here you'll see that I have activity oh. feed server. That's great. And I'm looking at the like original versus the V2 of the branch, right? There were two times I updated this. Wow. If I were to go ahead and look at maybe V1 versus V2, it would go ahead and tell me that what I did was I changed port from 3000 to 8000. Nice. Nice. Yeah, because in GitHub, it doesn't show that stuff that you're saying. And then just that's and that's basically in the graphite interface. So yeah, all handled. That's what I'm talking about. 
But for real though, that's the whole idea. So instead of just one giant PR that you just are probably not gonna read, you can get these small pieces that you can actually read and make sense. And for me, this is the way that I'm gonna change my coding with AI in 2026. So I want you to try this out. Graphite actually sponsored this and they're giving everyone watching two months of their team plan for free. And basically that comes with unlimited AI code reviews and a bunch of other good stuff. There's no credit card needed and all you have to do is just use the link in the description and use the code stack with Ray. Drop a comment and let me know what your biggest Git headache is. I'm super curious. I'm gonna be adopting this workflow for 2026 and I'm already introducing this into my own AI coding projects live. So make sure you subscribe. I appreciate that you're on this journey with me. So thanks for watching.